hello and welcome back. So today I want to continue working on the effect pedal by making an octave effect. Now the octave effect comes in two different flavors. You've got the octave down and you've got the octave up. But today I will focus on the octave up and maybe look at the octave down at a different time. But anyway, the nice thing about this effect is that it will actually have an influence on the sound that the pedal produces. So if you're curious about what this effect is, how it works and how you can build one, then keep watching. So the first thing that we need to talk about is what the octave effect is supposed to do. Now an octave is a frequency range between a starting frequency and its double. So for example, if we consider a center frequency of 440 Hz, an octave up from this would be 880 and an octave down would be 220 Hz. So the octave effect needs to identify the center frequency of the note that you're playing and then insert either its double or its half into the sound that you're playing. The only trick is that you only want to insert this extra signal without adding too much harmonics, because those would end up making the instrument sound quite nasty. So how do you create an octave up effect? Well, the most common way that I found to be implemented in analog effects is to simply take your signal, rectify it, filter it a bit, and that's it. Let's see how this would work in a simulation first. And for that, we can use the circuit. So what I have here is a reference signal running at 200 Hz. And to rectify it, I'm using a behavioral voltage source. Basically, if my reference voltage is positive, then it's outputting the reference voltage. If it's not positive, then I'm outputting its inverse. And then I also added the low pass filter at 1.59 kHz. Now, we can analyze the waveforms in LTSpice, we can look at their FFT signature, but using this wave statement, we can also listen to these waveforms. So let's see what happens. Let's just zoom in into a bit of this signal. So this is the basic sine wave. This is the rectified version. So by rectified, it's a perfect rectification. There's no voltage losses, like if you would use diodes. And then the filtered version has the difference that its bottom half is not so sharp, so you don't have a sharp transition from a falling signal into a rising signal, it's smoothed out a bit. So if we look at this from an FFT point of view, and let me just add some extra plot planes. So we have our reference signal, a clean 200 Hertz sine wave. It sounds like a clean 200 Hertz sine wave. Then with the rectified version, we see that our 200 Hertz spike disappeared completely. We only have it at 400, so we start off with its double frequency, and then we have a bunch of harmonics added on top. And if we listen to this, well, it, you hear all of those harmonics in there, so it's different, but it's not that pleasant yet. Now, if we move to the filtered version, we can see that we still have all the harmonics, but they're dropping off at a rate of around 20 decibels per decade. So it's a single order filter, it gives this sort of response. You can play around with the filter, maybe add a higher order filter or change the frequency at which it's filtering and then the spectrum will look different. And if we listen to it, it also sounds different. It sounds a bit better. You don't have all that high frequency noise content in there. Now we can look at what happens when your input signal is a bit more complicated. So what I have here is an input signal that has both a 200 Hertz sine wave and a 300 Hertz sine wave. With the difference that the 300 Hertz sine wave is only half the amplitude of the 200 Hertz. So the 200 is the main note and then this 300 is something extra in there. Again, let's zoom in a bit. So this is our input signal. This is the rectified version of it and this is the filtered version of it. Again, not much interesting here. Let's see the FFT spectrum. So now with our reference signal, we have two sine waves in there, the 200 and the 300. If we listen to it, well, it's not 
that nice, but hey, that's the sound of a 200 and 300 hertz signal. We see that by rectifying it, quite a lot of spikes appeared. So now we have a 100 hertz spike, which is 300 minus 200. We have the 200, we have the 300, the 400, and so on. So we have a huge harmonic content. And if we listen to it, yes, it does sound like there's a large harmonic content. And with the filtered version, again, we hear that the higher frequencies are attenuated a bit. So the thing we can see from this simulation is that by using this sort of octave up effect, especially on a guitar note or a chord, you will have quite a lot and quite interesting harmonics appearing because of the way the sound will interact with the effect. So now let's try to implement this effect in an actual circuit. And for that, I prepared this little circuit. So what I got here on the left side is the signal source. So a 100 Hertz combined with a 250 Hertz. Then I have two branches. One of them will be going through the effect. One of them will be bypassing. And then at the end we have the summing amplifier. So the point is that with the final effect, I will have a couple of potentiometers to select how much sound comes from the effect and how much is bypassed. This will enable the fine tuning of the final sound. Then on the effect sound, we have a preamplifier that amplifies by a factor of two. That is because by rectifying the signal, we only get half of it. So we're compensating for that here by doubling it initially. Then we have a basic bandpass filter. So a high pass filter followed by a low pass filter. Again, the two resistors are fixed in the simulation, but in the final thing, they will be potentiometers. And then we have the main element, which is the absolute value amplifier. And finally, we have a low pass filter right at the end to filter out most of the high frequency harmonics. Now, if you want to learn more about the basic amplifier elements that are used in the schematic, I highly recommend this application note 31 from Texas. This contains the basic inverting amplifier that I'm using the inverting summing amplifier, which is used at the end to combine the two signals, and it also has this absolute value amplifier. The only difference between this schematic and the one I implemented was the addition of this extra capacitor, C7, which seems to help a bit with stability. So if we run this thing, we have our input signal. We see that it's being amplified by our preamplifier stage. After passing through the bandpass, we see a bit of an influence, but the exact influence will be decided by the final values of this filter. So this is at the end of the bandpass, and after the absolute value amplifier, we see our rectified signal. So we see there's no voltage drop, so this circuit is working like an ideal rectifier. And finally, after the final low pass, we have part of the signal smoothed out a bit. And then we take this signal and the starting one, we combine it in the summing amplifier. And this is our final signal. Now, it looks quite weird, but let's see how it actually sounds. And for that, let's build the thing and see what happens. And this is what the final schematic looks like. So here I got my main connector part. I got my decoupling capacitors. My input signal is passing through my amplifier, then the bandpass filter, and here I have my two potentiometers connected. Then I have my absolute value amplifier part, my low pass filter, then the mixer, so the one that's taking in on the one side the input signal and the other side the output signal after the low pass. It's passing it through potentiometers one and four, and then I have my inverting summing amplifier. And then this goes out back into the main board where it gets to the output connector. So the board is pretty simple. I have my two dual op amps. If you really wanted to, you could put everything into a single quad op amp. But for me, this was easier from a layout point of view. And also I'm using the LM833, which is a dual op amp. And well, the board came out quite nicely. So now let's plug it in and try it out. So let's start things off by looking at the waveforms passing through the circuit. So what I got here is the circuit and my oscilloscope and the first channel is connected to the input signal. So the signal that's coming from the motherboard and that's entering the effect. And we can start to probe the circuit 
to see exactly how it is affecting the signal. So first of all, we can check the first amplifier stage and we can see that the output signal is double that of the input signal or whatever value you want based on the resistors you put in there. Then we can check what happens after the filter, so after the bandpass filter. We can see that low frequency signals aren't really affected, but if we try some high frequency signals, we can see that part of the high frequency content is being attenuated. But of course, what happens depends on how the bandpass filter is set up. And finally, if we look at the output of the effect, we can see our rectification going on. So if I try to overlap the two signals a bit, we can see that part of the signal is passing unaffected, so it has the same basic shape, but then the other part appears after this sudden change. So that's where the signal goes from positive to negative, and we have this indentation going the other way. So the circuit works. Let's try it out a bit, playing around with the guitar. So got my effects set up, let's try it out. So let me just grab this thing and turn the effect on. So the first thing to talk about is the two outer potentiometers. The one on the left sets how much of the sound goes through the actual effect. And if we turn it the other way, nothing passes. And the rightmost one sets how much of the sound bypasses the effect. So right now, even though the effect is fully on, nothing is passing through the actual effect, everything is bypassing. So by setting the two, you can set how much of the sound you want to pass and how much not to pass. Now, the two inner potentiometers refer to the bandpass filter. So for example, at the moment, we can hear the effect on the low frequency sounds and on the high frequency sounds. But I can set it so that, well, you can still hear it on the high frequency sound. So the bandpass filter isn't the best thing, but you can go for a better circuit on this little bit of the circuit. Now, one of the most interesting things about this effect is not the sound produced when you play one note, so, but what happens when you play more than one note? So we can hear this subtraction of the two signals. So just like we've seen in the simulation, when you have two quite large signals, you will get your upper harmonics, but you will also get this subtraction of the two signals resulting into a lower harmonic. So this is one of the things that you can't hear with the effect off. So when you're playing a chord or something, then this should sound quite nicely. So all in all, the effect works, it produces some interesting sounds, and based on how you set it up, you can get something quite unique that suits your taste the best. And the nice thing about it is that it's quite a simple effect, so the electronics behind it is not that complicated, you just need to figure out this bandpass filter thing. I may have to update that in a future video. But for now, Hope you got some useful information after this, leave your thoughts in the comments, thank you for watching, make sure to subscribe to be updated with all my latest videos, and see you next time.
Bye-bye.